Welcome to Modelling Fundamentals. This is part 13, which is everything to do about purlins. Now with the first method that I'm going to show you, we're going to need to set our ACS up onto the plane that I want to put my purlins in. So there's a couple of different ways I can do this. I'm going to choose uh, the three-point method here. Um, set the ACS up by the three-point method. So pretty standard. There's a couple of different ways we can do this. Okay. So now that I've got that set on that plane that I wish to place my purlins, I'm going to come up to the ProSteel Purlin tool, which is E1, and down on the prompt line it's going to say for me to enter the lower left vertex for the purlin distribution. So I'm going to go nearest to just, just a, an arbitrary point on the, on the column and up to that top corner. And you can see it drops the purlin straight in for me on that plane. So let's run through a couple of these settings. Uh, might make it easier if I show you the picture. So we'll just expand the picture out. It just makes it a little bit easier for us. So you can see that I can put the purlins in on an angle. Uh, we also have number two here is a height offset. And that's really handy when I've got to offset the purlins up off the steelwork, which is quite common. Um, I can adjust the side offsets of the purlins here, so you can see 4 and 5 currently offset at 200 millimeters left and right, as well as top and bottom. Now, every now and then the top and bottom might get a little bit confused about, you know, it d depends on the ACS and so forth, so sometimes uh, if I change here, change the bottom offset, every now and then the top might move, I mean in this instance the bottom did. I'm just saying don't be surprised if they get a little bit mixed up occasionally. Okay, so we'll leave these at 200, 200. Now the offset of purlins that currently is sitting at a meter, if I change it to 1500 you can see it's a live update. Um, the engineer will generally tell you the specification that the purlins have to be. Okay, um, I also have a maximum value here that will lock in the value. It means that it will not exceed the value I put in. All right, of 1,200. So no more than 1,200 as an example. If I go to shapes, um, I mean the common shapes for Australia are your Z and C purlins. Just bear in mind that we have different ones for Victoria, um, and uh, of course you have your different sizes that you can select. Now the key thing here is you can see these purlins are actually back to front to how they normally mount. There's a little mirror switch here. This really should say flip rather than mirror because that's all it does. It just flips them over. It's not really the right wording there. Alright, so that's um, worked pretty well. I'll show you the next method on the little rafters that I've got here. So uh, I'll just reset uh, my ACS. You can see here by hitting the aeroplane it'll reset the ACS for us. Which is a, a neat little tip for you. Go back to Perlins. Now if we go back to our prompt line and keep reading, lower left, or if I hit reset, it will actually allow me to select the beams. So I'm going to right click for reset. And it says here, select the first beam. And then again, select the second beam. And what it'll do is it'll drop the purlins straight in based on those two beams I just selected, which is far easier than picking lower left, upper right. This is my preferred method. Okay, again, I'm going to flip them over. Now you can kind of see up here that I've got two pretty close to each other here. So how do we edit these once we've dropped them in? Well, there's a yellow cross here through the middle of it. You can see that's, that's how I get into this macro. So if I either double click it or right click uh, properties, it will allow me to come in here and that way I can adjust my offset and so forth. We can tweak it around. Alternatively, you can remove the yellow cross and move them around manually. All right, it's entirely up to you how you want to deal with this. So, And you can sit there and fudge it till you get it right. Bit of room there for the sheeting as you can see. Okay, other neat little functions that um, we can use with the purlins is we can actually run them in like joists, like run them in the cavity. So I don't really have any settings here for this at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just um, muck around with some settings here for you. Um, it, but instead of the height offset, we um, 
we need to actually make it a negative offset, offsetting it into the um, uh, offsetting it into the uh, into the shape. So uh, top of steel should be minus sorry minus two hundred and three, not one hundred. Um, and if I go object view centered, it's a little bit hard to see. Once we start getting a few little objects and bits and pieces in here, it gets a bit hard to see. Uh, top of steel. So I'll leave it at top of steel. That's that's sort of where you'd run the sheeting across. Okay. Um, you can see I've got my left and right offsets here, which I'd probably want to pull those back to zero, if you know what I mean. So so that they just start inside the steelwork. Um, an automatic connection will tidy all the rest of this up. I just just don't want too much overhang. So if we go to connection. I have the option here to do both both ends and I can actually place shear plates. I need to have a shear plate template. Now you do have one in the standard build. I can't recall which one it is. Um, I'll pick the horizontal connection just see what that does. There's a fair bit for it to do here. It's doing both. It's connecting both left and rights up at the same time. Yeah, now that one's coped so it'll be the other one of course. And we'll let that update itself. Yeah, so I understand that's not perfect for a Perlin connection. It was all I have, but as an example with what you can do with it. Now it won't do Perlin cleats like this automatically, but what it will do is it will do the. You can see the shear plates, web angles, and end plates. All right, so you do have uh, some uh, options there for connecting up, and they're particularly good for doing floor, uh, you know, f sections of floor supports and so forth. Now the reason we can't see our objects there was I still have my clipping planes on. Aeroplane fixes it all up. Aeroplane 1. Alright, and now that I've actually got that setting in, now it should make it sort of pretty easy. I'll tell it, um, uh, don't forget to tell it, hook it up as per those shear plates. Oh, I was just thinking. Okay, so again, the connection's not perfect because I didn't really have a template for it. I would have wanted 4.6 bolts, and 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 the you know the whole spacings and stuff are going to be wrong. But um, using the template that I had given for that, uh, you, you get the idea of where we're going with it. Now, a little something else I want to show you is if I had two different sized rafters and I was to right click and select my objects. It's not going to put the purlins in on the right plane because what it does is it works on the centroids of each object. So you can see I've got one big rafter and one little rafter here. All right, so you, you kind of get a bit of an idea there. It's running up on top and it runs into that other one because it's based on sort of centroids of the object. So a neat little trick I just want to show you if you've got two different sort of rafters that you're going to is take a copy of one of them as a sacrificial kind of uh, rafter and just place it outside the, the, the roof line. That way I can go reset, pick one, pick the sacrificial one, it puts it in on the right plane, I'll just set this template up, there we go, and then get rid of the sacrificial one, okay, and, 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 and sort of move your purlins across. That's now sitting across the top of all the steelwork, so a neat little trick there for you, okay. So the next thing we want to have a look at is we want to mount these purlins up or connect these purlins up using a purlin cleat connection to these rafters. So into Pro Steel purlin cleat. Okay, uh, part one is we select our purlins. I'm just holding down the control button, accept, and then pick your two rafters while you hold down the control button, accept, and it will run through and put the connection on. Now we have several different connection options here. We have a pearl and cleat, which is standard for Australia and New Zealand. Um, I will have a template here for you that you could load up, uh, just based on the 75 by 8 cleat. Uh, always handy to have that picture too. Uh, we can have a pearl and shape. Uh, this will be in different countries that will utilize this sort of thing. Uh, there's a pearl and shoe, I think that's um, big in the US, although I'm not quite sure. Uh, so we have a weird little press bracket there that it will work out for you. 
Uh, we can also bolt it directly. Okay, but the purlin cleats are our standard um, thing in Australia and New Zealand. Okay, we can use polyplate here if we use a shape, that, well, a, a non-standard shape. We can offset our purlin cleat if you were to have it on a piece of angle or something. Um, and just follow the numbers to populate your offsets and so forth that you need. Now, one little tip here with the bolting while I think of it. Um, with the 4.6 bolts, we want to use a 12mm purlin bolt in an 18 diameter hole, which means I'm going to need a 6mm work loose. So just be mindful of that when you're putting in some of these figures, okay? Work loose is always the clearance on the bolt. So once we've got our settings right, uh, it's pretty quick to drop all these guys in, select, accept, select, accept, and in they'll go. So pretty straightforward. There you go. And I do these in two sets. Like I'll do the roof and then I'll do the walls. Okay, I, I, I don't do them because there's a little bit of confusion in that corner there with what supports what. Um, so I always break it up into two, into two defined sort of sets. All right. Um, if you expand this down, we have our pearl and fly brace. Let's have a look at our pearl and fly brace. Our pearl and fly brace will ask us for the support shape, which is our rafter, to our purlin. And you can go left and right if you needed two fly braces. I've only got one in this instance, so I, I'll, I'm just going to go left. Okay, but if I went left and right, it, it would put two fly braces each side of the rafter. The settings are pretty straightforward. It shows you how to make the cleat. Um, I can choose my shape type. You can see here I've got 50 by 3 angle the moment with 25 mil offset left and right I can set it by angle but it's you know normally I'll put it in the pearl and lap holes 450 each side you know 900 lap so I don't base mine on angle I base mine on distance um, our bolting remember a 12 mil bolt in a with 6 mil work loose uh, the pitch from table means it's going to go and get the pearl and holes out of the um, shape database Okay, pretty straightforward, and you've got a template there to use if you need it. Now the final thing that I'd like to talk to you about is lapping, because that's bound to come up with anybody that works with Z Perlins. Um, I've just drawn a little sample here for you, out in space. So we're going to go to the Modify command. I don't know whether you recall, but we went through this a little bit. We'll go to the Divide, um, and I'll just give you a little picture here, so if we click on the divide distance you can see here you know the positive distance here that's given if I set that to a negative value that will give me a lap okay so I'm going to divide these guys through here to a negative value except and pick the center of the column uh, of the rafter there somewhere and you can see it split these into left and right just like that Alright, so that's step one of lapping. Now, I don't move these, I let them collide as such. I just leave them there. I don't try and roll them over or anything, just so you know, because I get people asking me about that. Alright, now I'm going to go object view centered looking down on top. And now this is the hard bit. You might need to practice this a couple of times, and you're going to have to trust me with this one a little bit. Alright. Um, I'm just going to draw a couple of construction lines here and move them in, but ultimately what I want to do is I need to drill up the line of purlins. Okay, so I'm just going to move these in 35mm because that's the whole distance in, which is what I'm doing right now. Okay, and that, that sets my, uh, it gives me a point to select at 35mm in from the edge of the purlins. And I'm going to go object ACS centered looking up into the web of the purlin. So object ACS centered, okay, it doesn't change my view. And I'm going to choose this guy here, so I'm looking up the line of the purlins. So the X and Y here, I can't see the X and Y, but the Z is coming out this way here. And remember, drilling is going to drill up along the Z, so it's going to drill up along the line of purlins. So I, I hope you. Have, I hope I've sort of made that clear. Uh, 
don't think I've got a drill pearl, uh, pearl and drilling set here. No, I'm not. So just uh, if you want to try this, uh, I don't want to go across the, uh, along the shape. That's along the shape. I don't want to go along the shape. So I'll set a one here, just as per the drilling Mac, uh, drilling uh, tutorial that we did. And it'll be t t 110. M12 with 6 mil work loose and it's absolutely got to be shape center. This is really important. Okay, give me a whole set like this. Okay. I so so just get get these settings right. I want to drill multiple objects, which is the center button, and I'm going to grab left and right there just by crossing. Except and I'm going to pick my construction line. Okay, now it's going to drill up right through the web of all of those pearls. You can just make out the whole profile right there. If I go up to the next one, there's your whole, whole profile right there. You can just make it out. It's drilled all the webs. So again, multiple, select, accept, drill the holes. Now if I just spin this around a little bit for you, you can see it's run up and it's done all of the holes in left and right purlins and I'm not going to do these um, center holes. I'll let the pearl and cleat do those, and we always do the connections last. Okay, after all other modifications, it's a big rule of pro steel. Okay, let's do the ones in the top now. So the Z is looking straight down now, which is fine. Okay, so it's going to drill just exactly how we're looking at it this time. I think the whole centers for. The web, I think, are about 70, so I'll just set it to 70. I, I, I think that's what it is. Multiple objects. Grab the left and right purlin. So we've got left and right here. And remember the Z, it's going to drill up and down the Z, which is fine how we're looking at it. Except, and I can grab this out here because it is going to go to shape center, if you remember rightly here. Okay, so it's going to go along this line, find the center of my object, and drill in the center of it. Again, left and right, purlins, except grab a construction line. It really is that simple. So you might need to practice that a few times just to sort of get your head around what it's doing. It is a very simple process. Because that at shape center works so well, I it, it, it will it will jump right across rows of purlins to get the center of the objects that I have selected. So I hope you kind of get it. That's the end result of what a couple of purlins look like that have been lapped properly. It's a very simple process. It's it's not particularly difficult. And now we can grab all our purlins and put our um, our our cleats on them. Okay, except and grab the rafters. Remember, hold down control while you grab the rafters. Okay, so. Um, very, very simple. You'll do a big roof area very, very quickly like this. Okay, that, that's, that's the end result. That's what it looks like.